Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube video about digital dentistry. Now, during this session, we'll be using an intraoral scanner to generate a few models that will be used to do a smart fusion to plan a dental implant. So as we plan this, we're going to use the original scan model, then do an STL wax up, so a stereolithic wax up. Then we'll also use the model to extract the tooth. So this is all being done digitally and then we'll fuse these together so we can plan where the implant's going to be so eventually then we fuse this in with a CT scan so by doing so we can see the angulation and depth of the final implant placement so here I am I'm scanning the patient's upper jaw we can see that we're going to start in the posterior and we'll move around in a pattern there's a path you follow and as we go around you'll hear this clicking noise the clicking noise is telling me that I'm in the right location and stitching images together. When we get to the anterior area, we want to make sure that we're getting up high, so it's like having a nice high uh, standard impression. We want to see the bone and the soft tissue up in this area because this is where the implant's going to be placed. The implant's going to be in the upper left lateral of the patient's 22 or number 10. So we can see by taking the scanner, we can go around and capture this beautiful digital model of a patient. I'm really enjoying using this uh, software to do this and this digital technology. And this is part of the digital workflow. So when the patient comes in, we take a CT, then we take this file, which is a proprietor file by the intraoral scanner. And we're going to put these two together by creating an STL file. So this file will be transported out of the software. We can see on this uh, particular section that the lateral, the number 10 or 22, is actually a little bit protruded and not in the ideal position. So we're going to create a wax up digitally that's going to bring it back inside, then also cut the tooth. Look at this. This is what you can see. The actual color of the tooth is captured with this uh, trio scanner. So what we can see is that the, the tooth is not in the ideal position, but this uh, color of C2 is what we'll use. And then we'll also be placing the implant to a depth that we can create the ideal emergence profile and also have uh, the same kind of look on the other lateral. You see gold images look a little bit darker on this, but the porcelain looks great. So we're gonna scan the opposing arch and then do an alignment, which is like mounting your models on an articulator. Here you can see and hear the sound when it, it occurs. You want to kind of pull this slowly forward from the back and uh, kind of stitch these two models together and you'll hear this kind of magic wand sound as they kind of find themselves. And this tells the lab where the two are going to go together. Once the models are aligned, then we can kind of look at the whole project together and see if we have to go back in and touch up any scanning. And then it's time to send it to the lab, because we're going to send this off to the lab. They're going to help us in this case to do some of the uh, STL file. But very soon uh, we'll be able to do this in our own office, and we'll be using the software uh, called Nobel Clinician to do that. So they convert it into an STL file, which takes minutes, sending it back to us. So we'll have an alignment of a new tooth that looks great, and so it's a new wax up, digitally done. And plus we have the tooth removed with a little bit of the soft tissue removed on the other side. So we can see that on the right we're going to use this to place the implant to the, the correct depth and the left is going to tell us where the alignment of the tooth needs to be. So we open up Nobel Clinician software. This is my planning software. We can see the DICOM image here and this file is going to allow us to import this STL file. So this is the first one and this is, has the, the, the missing tooth which is going to be a digital scan then we're going to use a diagnostic scan as well so here's the diagnostic scan which shows the wax up so by using these two scans we're able to find out where we want to place the tooth what depth what angulation this is going to be so this digital workflow is simply fantastic it just gives us an ability to really see things in a way that we could never really do before and do it on the same day that the patient comes in for that first appointment. Once the STL files are imported, which are really digital models, we can now check the alignment, which is an important step. 
You'll see here, as I look at the occlusal view, I'm going to move into three different points to check the alignment. So I'll move back to the molar area and you'll be able to see the soft tissue. You can also see uh, how this aligns on the lingual here and how it comes around the tooth. And you'll always see some scatter. So the scatter is coming because this gentleman has crown and bridge which has some metal. So we want to make sure the alignment is good. So you can also check the soft tissue to do so. So here we're checking the different levels. So one is going to be the wax up and one's going to be with the tooth removed. As we move forward, we can see that this alignment is perfect and uh, very thin tissue on the facial, which is very, very typical. And as we move across, we can see getting to the anterior area, we'll be able to see that the wax up is actually not in the same position as the original tooth, which is why we're doing this. We want this to be in a new position so we can see the soft tissue uh, when the tooth is cut away, and, uh, but this is not in the same position. This is a new wax up. As we move to the distal aspect, we'll check the last area. So we want to check front, center, and back to make sure this is aligned so that when we're planning the, the implant, then this is going to be idealized based on this model. This model is where the template is fabricated. So this allows us to see the two that are aligned very well with the uh, DICOM image. So we want to make sure that those are aligned so that when we do the planning that everything is going to line up from a surgical point. Because this is going to be what we use to generate a surgical template which will be placed in the implants. So we'll start to place an implant here. We're going to pick a noble active implant. So we'll go and pick a 13 millimeter implant and you can see when we align this we want to rotate around the implant and when we do so we're going to see that the implant is not in the correct alignment. So this would be a problem so we're going to take it, move the red dot so this tips the implant and then the green square will bodily move the implant. So by doing this we can position this implant visually see that we have enough bone around the implant for this to be placed. This is going to be a narrow platform 13 millimeter long implant immediately placed. So we'll extract the tooth, put the template on, place the implant. Now that we have the implant in a close position, now we're going to finalize the position. So the position is going to be finalized by the free gingival margins. So we look at the contralateral side and then we decide that this is where we want the free gingival margins to be. So if we rotate around, we want to find that point. So you'll see right here, so that little kind of uh, circle is going to tell me where my new free gingival margin is going to be on that number 10 or number 22. So as we draw a line tangential to this, we can see that we have then the ability to know that's the, where the implant measurement is going to be taken from. If we measure from this line down to the top of the implant, we want to be at least 3 millimeters sometimes even 3.5, but 3 usually works fantastic and gives us the ideal emergence profile. So as we measure down, then we can then take the implant and submerge it a little bit more. So we'll measure this and we get this to close to 3 millimeters and right there. And so as we do this, this is going to tell us when we place the implant that this is the ideal position. Now we'll have to use a bone mill uh, when we're doing this because you can see the lingual bone is going to be thick so we know automatically that this is what's going to happen. We click the depth button so it just brings the implant straight in. We're not moving the implant around and this is allowing us to place this implant in an ideal position. So I'll move it from the buccal plate and you can see that we're actually getting close to the incisal edge when we do this. And that's not a concern because we're going to actually plan that as well. So. We'll go back and we'll uh, just make sure that we have this line in the ideal position so we can just check and make sure that this is at the correct depth. So we'll move this up a little bit. We want to be 90 degrees and actually right to the top of the implant and we're measuring from that free gingival margin. So you can see now we're at the correct depth and it looks quite deep but this is where this implant needs to be uh, from a depth and angulation point which is critical for us to have the proper aesthetics and long-term function. So this is how I kind of do it. I've come up with this way and it tends to work very effectively to create the ideal 
aesthetics and emergence profile, which maintains bone and then prevents uh, problems for the patient. So if we look at this now, we can see that the ring is showing orange. It's because it shows that it's touching the tissue, not the bone or not the adjacent teeth. So what we're going to do is when we extract the tooth, this tissue will be out of the way. Plus we could flap, but we won't have to flap here. We're not touching bone or tissue, so this is normal to show. Now we're going to pick an ASC um, abutment here and have a look at how the alignment of the screw channel will be once the implant is placed in this position. So by tipping and rotating this, we click the rotation tool, rotate around, we can see at 10 degrees, we're going to be in the ideal position for this screw channel. Plus, we're going to be able to have the lingual aspect of this crown be idealized and be looking like a tooth rather than a big bump on the lingual, which a lot of implant crowns start to look like. We don't want to have that, but we want to have this looking like a tooth, functioning like a tooth and not trapping food. So we can rotate this channel and know that the ASC or the angulated screw channel option is going to be fantastic here. So we can rotate around, but we wouldn't want to do that. We want to have it right here. So this enables us to plan the surgery based on the prosthetics. You can see where the original tooth was and where the new tooth will be. We can see that they're not in the same position on this case because we wanted to move this tooth back in a more ideal position. So this shows me how thick the soft tissue is right here where the arrow is showing. You can see that this is going to show us exactly how thick the soft tissue is over the bone. And this, this guy has a fair bit of tissue, which is good. Now we're going to create a template. So the template fabrication, the computer will start to generate this template, which has a ring in it. And the ring is going to give us the depth and angulation that's needed to place this implant to that depth that we need to have the proper emergence and then have the proper aesthetics. So it's a very, very nice solution to kind of get the patient to where you want to go. And it's certainly going to be something that makes it a lot easier. We can check with Oscar, who is this guy here, to make sure we're not breaking any of the rules for Nobel BioCare rules with uh, this template. And But we'll notice that the template will be fabricated. We have to approve it. So we have to take a visual look at this and say, yes, this is what we want. This is in the position where we want and we're going to place the implant here. So it's a clinical decision made by the doctor and uh, can be helped by the dental assistants or dental lab technicians or people like that. But I think that a doctor should always have a look at this and make sure it's where you want this. So now that the implant is in one direction, the angulated screw channel is another direction. And we can see that by putting those two together, we get this idealized position of the implant. and. Uh, when this is all made, we can see that we have adequate bone on the front aspect of this. There's going to be a little spot that we have to do a little bit of bone grafting at the time of surgery. We know everything that we need. We know the implant's going to be a 3.5 by 13 millimeter long implant. We can temporize this because we've got a fair bit of uh, implant in the bone. So we'll prepare this to be adequate to really grab the implant at the time of surgery. And the Noble Active is the implant that's really great to do that. It's a great immediate placement implant. So we'll be able to get this temporized for this gentleman, which provides him with quality of care at the time of treatment and during treatment. So before he even gets his tooth, he won't have to wear a temporary partial. And that's very typical in this situation because that bone is, is still very hard underneath this tooth. Plus we can grab it with this variable pitch thread you see here. It's a very aggressive, large thread. So it grabs quite nicely when you prepare the bone adequately to put this in. So we get this all done and it's going to be a position of, uh, of uh, success. And uh, you can see that the final uh, template is then going to be fabricated by Nobel BioCare, sent back to me in about four days. And then we are going to start to be able to do the surgery. You used to have to take uh, models with PVS impression material. This is way better. So taking these STL files from the intraoral scan files is the way to go with this. Putting them in with the DICOM files is just, just amazing. So it's really the digital workflow at its best. So this is Dr. Scott McLean 
Follow me on Instagram at Dr. Scott McLean or give me an email if you like this and uh, certainly subscribe to this channel if you want to get free updates.